Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our presenters for today, um, Dr. Nohair Lofti and Dr. May Soliman from the British University in Egypt. Dr. Lofti is a lecturer at the university and received her PhD in degree in Applied Linguistics and Humor from Cairo University. She grew interested in stand-up comedy as a humor genre and decided to analyze comedians' linguistic choices to create humor in stand-up comedy acts from Egypt and the US. Her passion for the study of comedy shows has been the result of witnessing how comedians skillfully use language in their performances to criticize social, cultural, and political issues of concern to their community. Then we also have Dr. May Solomon, who is a lecturer of applied linguistics in the Department of English Language and Literature and the Staff Development Coordinator at the Faculty of Arts and Humanities at the British University in Egypt. Dr. Solomon obtained a master's degree in teaching English as a foreign language from the American University in Cairo in 2012 and then obtained her PhD in applied linguistics from Cairo University as well in 2019. So today, Drs. Lofty and Solomon will be speaking to us on humor in the time of the coronavirus. And um, they will be presenting a content analysis of Egyptian comedic expressions on Facebook. They tell us that one unique comedic expression that evolved during the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in Egypt is the Facebook page coronavirus, where the author of the page adopts the persona of the coronavirus, exploring issues of the pandemic in Egypt. The posts mock the illogical actions undertaken by the public and the state and they will be analyzing different memes created by the coronavirus page. Their discussion relies on content and visual analysis of memes addressing incidents or decisions criticized by the page's author. They also examine different humor styles and types employed by the author to comically deliver his or her message. So without further ado, I hand over to Drs. Lofty and Solomon. You guys can start, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me just start by sharing my screen. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Jen and Professor Hurst, for uh, this opportunity to be part of the of the inspiring event. I really enjoy the seminar series so far. So, as Jenna said, today we're presenting a paper that was actually published in November 2021. Uh, this is why I added the link underneath the, the title for your reference. Uh, we worked on this paper during the, actually the second wave. wave. We started working on the paper during the second wave of the virus where we had partial lockdown. Uh, data collected uh, ended in October, 2021. So, and although the Facebook page that we're actually analyzing uh, the, uh, that's entitled the coronavirus is still active, it now has much, much less traffic on it. And we will end our presentation today with, uh, with the latest meme that's published on the page. So let me start by giving some infographic data about the page itself. Uh, the coronavirus page was launched on April 7th, 2020. Um, and that was almost two weeks after uh, the state announced that we're uh, undergoing total lockdown to control the spread of the virus. And to date, up to the moment, the page has 639,000 followers. Uh, the page's author, as Jenna introduced, do adopt uh, the persona of the coronavirus where they uh, were, well, I assume he's a male, but I'll use the, he or she used to publish comic memes and status update on a daily basis. I think uh, the main aim of the page was to release the tension and stress resulting from uh, the lockdown. Uh, in this uh, way, uh, the page actually reflects two main theories of humor, the first of which is the relief theory. Um, and this is a psychological theory that views humor as a form of physical relief from stressful events. Uh, within the framework of this theory, humor is linked actually to well-being and good health, and that was much needed during the lockdown since our lives were uh, literally on hold with no clear vision of the future. And I think to the majority of people that was really scary, uh, the first of who are actually is actually me. Uh, the second theory um, this uh, page addresses or kind of reflects is that of incongruity. 
And the theory uh, was first introduced by Hutchinson in 1971 in his book, Reflections Upon Laughter and Remarks Upon the Fable of the Bees. And in this theory, humor actually depends on the idea of shared knowledge um, between the comedian and the audience. And um, it is this shared knowledge that enables the audience to understand uh, the unexpected, sometimes ambiguous content or punchlines presented by uh, the comedian. So the aim of the paper was actually to investigate the content of selected committing meme, uh, comedic memes from the, sorry, from the coronavirus page that were created with the aim of criticizing real incidents and official statements. Uh, we were analyzing the different styles and types of humor uh, used in the selected memes, and we were looking at both the verbal and nonverbal humor, since we're looking at pictures. Uh, analysis was by nature multimodal. Uh, so to begin with, uh, let me define what a meme is. So a meme is basically a recreation of images and texts created by share, uh, created and shared by internet users to convey a message humorously. It is multi-layered because it combines both images and text sharing the common properties related to form and content uh, and are rapidly circulated by netizens. And um, this definition was proposed by Schiffman and Hughes in their research papers. So memes are in fact uh, important because they can actually influence uh, social and cultural life due to the rapid electronic transmission and their capability to convey information. And the page coronavirus itself, um, when it was launched back in April 2020, um, I think most of uh, Egyptian Facebook users were actually following what was actually what was happening in reality in terms of state official uh, statement uh, official statements or the number of uh, um, uh, cases of COVID cases through the memes produced by the page rather than going to kind of official uh, state official uh, channels of information. So to begin with, uh, a total of nine memes from the coronavirus page were analyzed, and here we focused on memes that have text picture combinations. Um, analysis depended on three dimensions. The first one was concerned with explaining the social situation of the meme in terms of the setting, event, and time in which the post was published. So we contextualize the meme uh, and when the meme was published and how it refers back to real incidents or events. The second dimension uh, was looking uh, at classifying the meme itself. And here we depended on uses classification of memes that, uh, and he classified meme, memes into seven categories. The first of which is word specific. And this is where the picture used in the meme do not add much significance to the verbal message. The focus here is on the text rather than the picture. The second one is the opposite, that's picture specific, where uh, the message is conveyed more through the picture rather than the text. The third type is the one that's balanced, Jew specific, where both the text and the picture help in conveying the humorous uh, message. Uh, the fourth type is the additive, and this is uh, where either the words or the picture elaborate more on the message. In other words, the meme creator here uh, considers both text and picture of significance to the message, but they use one of them to achieve a better interpretation of the target message. The fifth type is the parallel uh, type of memes, and these are uh, those where the text and picture are not related to each other, and together they uh, again convey the humorous, um, the humorous message. The sixth is the montage, and this is where um, the text put in different font shapes and sizes become part and parcel of the picture itself, and they become inseparable. And the last one is the interdependent one, and this is where neither the text nor the picture would elaborate the message on its own. Again, they work together, they depend on each other to convey the message. The last dimension uh, of analysis was concerned with looking at the different humor styles and types as elaborated in this table. And uh, humor styles include uh, affiliative and aggressive. Um, and the affiliative one is when the author mocks other things or people in a positive way, as opposed to aggressive, where they mock other people in a negative way. The other two types of humor styles are self-enhancing and self-defeating. And these are concerned with uh, when the author explain, uh, mocks his or her own situations positively as in the self-enhancing or aggressive or negatively in the self-defeating. Humor types uh, 
value from comparison, where humor emerges from comparing two or more objects, or personification of objects, or exaggeration through the use of hyperpoles, for example, puns through the use of uh, words that might sound the same but have different meanings. And this is definitely in addition to sarcasm, silliness, and surprise, which is very close to incongruity as a source of humor. That is saying something totally unexpected um, to the audience, thus resulting in laughter. Uh, now I will leave the floor to Dr. May. I will just mute myself. I'll be there, May, to um, change the slides. Thank you all for listening. Uh, thank you all for being here today. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, and um, as Dr. Nohair said, um, this qualitative study analyzed a total of nine memes, but for the sake of this presentation, we're going to focus only on uh, six of those memes, uh, and they are categorized in uh, three uh, different themes. Um, before going into the um, themes, um, uh, we had a kind of a multi-layered analysis. So the first level deals with the contextualization of uh, the meme itself and the social background, because um, uh, the major part of humor uh, lies in the shared knowledge between the persona of uh, the COVID-19 or the coronavirus and the audience. Uh, also, the second level um, deals with the type of the text picture combination of the meme. Uh, the third level is um, dealing with the style of humor, how uh, it is uh, used. And the fourth level is dealing with the type of um, uh, humor and what uh, its source is. Uh, so our three uh, themes are the memes uh, on uh, official numbers of COVID-19 cases memes uh, criticizing state decisions and measures taken by the state to control the spread of the pandemic. And the third theme is memes tackling people's action and awareness of the dangers of the pandemic. So uh, for our first uh, meme here, uh, before um, I get to analyze uh, uh, the meme here, uh, I just need to give you or a quick transaction or um, on this uh, meme. Um, uh, in order to put you in the picture. Uh, and in this meme, you can see the template that the Minister of Health, uh, we will refer to it here as MOH. Uh, this template was shared uh, on daily basis uh, through the Facebook uh, page of uh, the Minister of Health. Uh, so um, on the first row, you have three circles from uh, right to left. From right, uh, there is the number of the new cases, new infected cases. Uh, next to it, there is the number of the cases uh, whose results changed from uh, positive to negative, and as citizens, we didn't really get to understand what this meant, and this is part of the humor. Uh, and next to it, we have the number of uh, daily um, death cases. Uh, on the row below, we have the total number of the infected uh, cases. Next to it, we have uh, the number of uh, cases that completely recovered. And finally, we have the total number of um, those who died as a result of Corona. On the left-hand side, we have the hotline for uh, the Minister of uh, Health in case the um, citizens needed to contact them to call in sick or anything. This is the first part of the induction. The second part of the induction is related to the context when this um, uh, meme was released. Uh, during that time, we had a very classist commercial aired um, profusely on TV about one of the, gate, uh, the gated communities that's very extravagant, uh, very uh, expensive, and very classy at the same time. Uh, the gated community is called Medinati, or what uh, um, is translated into English as my city. Uh, and this um, commercial, um, supposedly the residents of uh, the compound uh, talk about how comfortable the compound is and how classy it is and how they all look alike and uh, they share the same socioeconomic background and they have um, excellent access to luxurious facilities and so on. Uh, of course, the um, commercial was mocked uh, on all social media platforms, and there were kind of parody skits uh, uh, related to the commercial with a lot of videos um, um, 
from different uh, poor local areas uh, in Egypt, uh, mocking and uh, uh, being sarcastic about the commercial. Uh, so this uh, meme here uh, uh, comes in this uh, context. So we have uh, the status update uh, on the top translates to, are you really dreaming of Madinati? You should be looking for a graveyard instead. Uh, so, um, back to our meme here, um, uh, this type uh, of meme is fold under the text uh, picture combination, uh, which is additive, uh, as the words amplify uh, the intended uh, meaning, uh, referring to that everybody is actually at risk. Uh, the style of humor, of course, is rather aggressive because it's attacking the audience and asking them to prepare for their own death, uh, rather than dreaming of living in this um, class uh, compound and the humor also stems from two things from the exaggeration because um, as you can see here uh, the number of death cases for example per that day was 16 and the total number of death uh, cases was uh, 452 in comparison to the number of the people living in Egypt who are more actually than 100 million so this is uh, not really alarming at that case. Um, this is a bit of exaggeration, of course. And also the humor stems from the incongruity resulting from talking about this, which is a mortifying uh, topic and referring at the same time to the commercial, which was widely uh, uh, made fun of and mocked uh, in a very humorous way on uh, the social media uh, platforms. Uh, so uh, now we're going to move to the second uh, meme in this uh, category. And uh, this is uh, a meme that um, uh, is a kind of, uh, or represent a different text uh, picture combination, which is uh, the montage uh, text picture uh, combination. Uh, the page of the coronavirus also uh, criticized the, the ministries of health lack of transparency in reporting the real numbers of uh, the infected cases during the first and second wave. Uh, the MOH was reluctant to report the real numbers uh, and was even reluctant to do a lot of PCR tests for uh, those who were suspected to suffer from corona. There was always the conflict between the health concerns and um, the economic concerns resulting from a prolonged lockdown and there was always a tendency to show that uh, things are under control and that um, they are uh, the cases are uh, decreasing and life is about to go back to its normal uh, sequence. Uh, so the meme here uh, again is an example of the montage text picture uh, combination where all the circles uh, in the original template disappear uh, and only one statement appear, uh, appears in the middle of the uh, template, which translates to slightly fewer cases than yesterday. So we don't need to bother ourselves with the numbers or the, with the real figures. Um, this type of humor is uh, rather a sarcasm as um, uh, the lack of transparency of uh, the Ministry of Health is uh, being uh, mocked here. Uh, the second theme uh, that we tackled in our paper uh, is the theme of criticizing state decisions and measures taken to control the spread of uh, the pandemic. And the coronavirus page actually made allusions to famous scenes from famous comic movies that the Egyptians loved to watch. Uh, the movie from which this meme is taken is called uh, Zaki Shen. And uh, of course, the name is allusion to uh, the famous um, action uh, movie star, uh, Jackie Chan. But unlike Jackie Chan, uh, Jackie Chan is uh, physically weak and silly in a very humorous way. Um, and ironically enough, he's working as a bodyguard to a troublesome young lady. Uh, and in uh, uh, the scene from which the uh, meme is taken, uh, the lady gets into trouble by being involved in a small car accident with a huge scary taxi driver. And uh, Zaki, of course, had to interfere as her bodyguard, so uh, he went to fight with the taxi driver. Uh, and uh, when he found that he was such a big scary man, so he picked a fight with the passenger who was rather uh, weak. 
which of course led the taxi driver, the big taxi driver to say that uh, he's surprised uh, by uh, saying, uh, is this a crazy person or what? Now back to the meme here, um, it manifests an additive uh, text picture combination, both the picture and the text uh, are humorously edited in order to uh, reveal uh, the intended uh, message. The image of the coronavirus is superimposed on the face of the character in the meme. Uh, and instead of the original lines of, um, uh, is this a crazy man? We have um, this line, I don't know what to do with such a smart government. This was in reaction to the government's um, decision to change the curfew time during Eid al-Fitr uh, to start at 5 uh, p.m. in an attempt to curb the spread of the um, uh, virus, uh, which of course was a lame decision since people used to go out in the morning, celebrate together, hug and kiss, and live normally, and the virus was uh, yani, having uh, fun uh, spreading among uh, different uh, people. Um, so again, uh, the style of humor here is rather affiliative because uh, sarcasm uh, towards the government's decision was done in a pleasant way in this uh, case. Uh, the second meme in this uh, criteria falls into the word specific text picture combination. And um, the status update here uh, translates to coronavirus is notifying citizens that starting tomorrow, the official working hours for coronavirus will be from 5 p.m. to uh, 6 a.m. Uh, this is a kind of personification here as uh, the coronavirus is personified as um, an official uh, governmental employee who has fixed working hours and away from this working hours, it turns into a harmless citizen, so it does not infect anybody, so people can just live their lives. Uh, this points to a kind of self-enhancing humor style, as the covet is making fun of um, himself or herself to create a humorous effect and a kind of bond with the Egyptian people. Uh, sarcasm, sarcasm here um, presents itself through mimicking the tone of uh, the governmental official uh, statements, which of course intensifies the humor effect. Moving to uh, the last theme, uh, which is the theme tackling uh, people's uh, actions uh, and uh, their level of awareness of the dangers of the pandemic. Um, um, one common feature uh, among the memes in this category is that they all manifest sarcasm. Um, it's clear from this meme that the text uh, picture combination here um, is um, a picture specific. Uh, text picture combination. It's actually a collage of different uh, pictures of different group of, uh, groups of people from different areas uh, on different transportation means. What's common among them is that um, almost no one is wearing a face mask and except for one or two and social distancing is not existent. Ironically enough, the um, uh, status update translates to awareness at its best. And uh, this comes um, in context of the government, uh, um, a lack of uh, transparency uh, concerning uh, the real numbers of cases and uh, saying that um, allegedly uh, the fewer cases of uh, COVID-19 uh, is related to the increase uh, in the level of awareness of the citizens, which of course uh, is uh, uh, not apparent in the um, uh, pictures here. So the human results from uh, the incongruity between the reality depicted in the pictures and the status update. Uh, the final meme uh, in our presentation uh, is um, uh, an interdependent text combination uh, uh, meme. Uh, the text uh, and uh, the, mess the, the picture and the message, the text message together uh, help convey uh, the message. Uh, the meme here is uh, just about a headline from the news and it's not edited uh, in any ways. Uh, it's from a news, a famous news agency and it's not edited in any ways. However, uh, the headline reads, uh, Ministry of Health 
says a decrease in coronavirus cases uh, is due to the increased level of awareness. Uh, and uh, the status update translates to this is a news line, news headline, and a comic at the same time, two in one. So uh, the status update here mocks the media's uh, lack of transparency, the government and the MOH's lack of transparency concerning the report uh, of um, the reality of the situation of the coronavirus, as well as the, of course, citizens' uh, lack of awareness. Describing the news headline as it is without any editing um, as a comic is a um, sort of an aggressive uh, type of uh, humor. So uh, in conclusion, um, this page, uh, this page uh, shows how humor can be a significant tool for criticizing people's actions, um, official statements, and state measures. It also shows that humor could be intelligently used to urge the audience to think or to critically rethink about incidents and therefore act accordingly. Uh, before wrapping up, we would like to share with you the latest uh, meme on the coronavirus page. And again, let me put you in the social context of the meme. Uh, during the past few weeks, we had this super uh, trend uh, song, romantic song about uh, a lover who is mourning the um, loss of his love relationship with his beloved. And during the song, he says that he was totally forgotten by his beloved as if he had never existed. And um, here we have an interdependent text picture um, combination in the meme. And uh, the um, uh, status update translate to totally forgotten as if I've never exist, uh, as if I've never existed uh, with the picture of the coronavirus imposed uh, on the face of the character in the meme. So it's as if coronavirus is um, uh, sadly singing that um, he is forgotten and as if he had never uh, existed before. And actually, this is, of course, humorous. Uh, it is a self-defeating um, type of um, humor because um, coronavirus is making uh, any fun of himself or of itself uh, as being uh, becoming weak and that people have completely forgotten about him, which is actually true. I just believe that in Egypt now, nobody is still wearing a mask except me and Dr. Nuhair. And we are the only people practicing actually social distancing. So it's really totally forgotten. Um, we are very happy uh, that you have attended uh, our uh, talk and we are ready for uh, questions, uh, your questions now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nohair and May. We appreciate your presentation, very interesting. Um, I'm now gonna hand over to Andrea who will tackle the questions and discussions. Okay, thank you. Um, and thanks so much for a very stimulating, interesting presentation. And um, I think what I will do um, is kind of just follow down through the, the chat and um, um, ask people to come in and um, uh, speak to their questions as we go along. Um, while there, I mean, there are a couple there, but I'm going to just uh, use my um, position as <laughs> sort of a chat host and just um, quickly ask you a question and and that has to do with something that that seemed to come out a kind of emotional tone that seemed to come out in in all of the memes actually it's it's almost like okay when you can't get anything done when you can't do something when critique doesn't work then you kind of express a kind of resigned helplessness and a, um, a frustration via humor so then the question would be, how effective is humor um, in generating uh, what you said in the end, this kind of social and political critique that actually has the capacity to get things done? Um, that would be my question. I'm, I'm just um, not sure of that. Um, I don't know if you would like to respond to that, and then we'll go on to um, questions in the chat session. Um. Let me make sure I got your question right, uh, Professor Hurst. Uh, you're asking about how effective humor is or how how far, to me, humor was our only way out during the lockdown, especially that 
it seemed at some point that the state is going in one direction and people wanted things to happen the other way around. So the only way out for us was actually expressing our opinions to criticize things through humor. And this is, I think, why the page uh, started uh, in the first place. Did I get your question right? <laughs> Yes, I think that there, there is this sense of, of, okay, there's nothing we could do, things are not going the way we want to, and you express then this kind of um, uh, uh, frustration, but it's a helpless frustration that comes out in humor. Um, yes. And th then one wonders how effective that can be in generating political change. How does that step move from that kind of expression, um, which comes out everywhere um, amongst people, but there doesn't seem to be a, an, a kind of movement towards change. It's almost like an after the fact, giving up on um, the idea of change when you do humor. I don't recall any, any kind of remarkable change after having such a page, for example, Yani. It stops there. A meme is published, people laugh, and the state is doing what they want. <laughs> Uh, Dr. May might correct me, but this is what I get, Yani. It stops there, literally stops there. People just express what they want to say through humor, and that's it. People share, people comment, and that's it. And I think also, yeah, I think that um, governments know this. They they just know that this is a kind of event out or relief. So it, it, it's just, you're just going to produce some memes, people are going to laugh, you vent it out, and then we're going to do what we want. So... <laughs> Nobody's hurt. <laughs> you laughed and we did what we wanted. Yes, yes. Thank you. That that, that kind of expressed him ex um, very clearly what I kind of felt about. I just this. want to add that the Egyptian, the Egyptians in general, they're very good at doing or and creating these memes. And they I think most of the people have some applications on their mobiles where they can create the meme in just a few moments. Uh, and uh, with any incident, any big incident, you, you can, for example, miss this on the news, but you would know from the social media that there has been uh, an incident that you've missed from the memes in the comics. So as Egyptians, we tend to make fun of all the tragic situations that um, happen. Um, sometimes, personally, sometimes uh, it's insensitive, like it's really tragic and uh, humor isn't the best way to express this. However, it happens and sometimes it's really tragic and humor isn't the right way to vent out, but this is the, the, the case actually. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah, well, thank, thanks very much for that. So I'm going to just go down the list and I'm going to um, uh, also abuse our privileged position and ask Jenna to chat um, first about what it is that struck her about your presentation. Thanks, Andrea. Okay, um, I want to ask you guys, to what extent does Egyptian society rely on infotainment sources for their daily news as opposed to official news sources? And if this is related to larger state censorship, where comedians have often been silenced or even threatened for any opposing or critical views. Well, people to a great extent, Jenna, depend on infotainment at some point, because as Dr. Mai said, we, we kind of know about the incident through memes before getting to official news sources. Uh, I don't think this is very much related to the idea of censorship because uh, there is no clear kind of rules for what is published on social media. Uh, maybe censorship is applied more to uh, uh, stand-up comedy shows because that's 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 my major in the first place. So censorship is very much applied on live shows, not on what's on social media. They might at some point uh, ban pages uh, altogether if they uh, tackle uh, politically sensitive topics, but not for the for something similar to the coronavirus page. So yes, at some point people depend a lot on the memes. They get to know that something happened somewhere and then they go back to the official uh, news sources to know what actually happened. And I have to say that sometimes the information they get from the meme uh, isn't accurate. Yeah, sometimes it's made for fun more than for telling the news. So it's, it's not that it's accurate in all times. It happened before that there was a trend of memes on a certain issue and it turned out to be inaccurate or not that um, close to reality. 
Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thanks, thanks, Jenna. Um, Jason, you have a question about what the ambiguous characterization of coronavirus? Do you want to well, yes. explain? Certainly, and thank you both. That's very interesting, and I'm glad I have the reference because um, I, I'm worried that I'm exactly the kind of person who's now going to look up use characterization, uh, or uses characterization, I think it was, and start using that for every meme I look at. But um, I was interested uh, to note the various different kind of directions you noted that the, the humor was pointed um, and how you were noting that that was done because uh, it was characterizing the virus as a whole. But what I wanted to note uh, by contrast is um, the, the British puppet show, um, uh, The Spitting Image relaunched during the coronavirus. And they also had a shtick where they made the coronavirus a character. Um, they had a little puppet and it showed up, but it was quite uh, crudely done. It wasn't particularly convincing. They made, they invested in this recurring character and it was quite thickly fleshed out. And what I'm interested in is the, that you seem to be describing how the different directions of parody at people's behavior, government policies and various, and just generally at the idea of this virus being gleeful at its ability to spread, seem to come from the fact that it was rather thinly drawn. It was just this, it was like a persona. It was the mask of the phenomenon as a whole, but there wasn't a lot of work being done to make that character uh, more substantive. And I was just wondering, um, well, more or less, you know, I, actually I'm, I'm wondering if there is a question. So I suppose what I mean is, you've noted that that could move in so many directions. And it strikes me as interesting that that kind of ambivalence and flexibility comes from how thinly drawn that was and how it was personifying this very scary phenomenon. Uh, and I am very sorry to have realized only now that, that might not be as much of a question as I thought it was. Um, so I'll shut up and, and leave you with one other thing. No, which... actually, what you said just um, um, raises this issue, actually. Um, um, I don't think that the person who created the page for the coronavirus has ever thought that Nuhair and I would be doing a paper on the posts that he or she uh, used to post during the coronavirus. It was, I think, done in a humorous way and in order to gain a lot of shares and likes and be popular on the on the social media. Uh, however, um, the thing is that um, um, the coronavirus persona was so real that people, including myself, I once tagged him in a post on another uh, commercial. Um, uh, somebody was uh, making an ad on the Facebook uh, during the first or second wave where ca when, when cases were so many that they are uh, making the grand opening for their cafe and restaurant so and they are welcoming people and they will practice social distancing and blah 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 so I, I was one of the people who tagged the coronavirus in this uh, post in order to uh, let him see his work so um, yes and actually uh, one thing that was interesting while we were writing the paper that we wanted to include but we thought this would be too much for one paper is the way the coronavirus interacted with the audience on the different posts so this would uh, require another study because um, there was a kind of interaction between the virus and the audience. And they, if there was a problem, they were trying to find him solutions. And some wished him well, because for example, students at university didn't have to go to college. They stayed at home and exams were changed into online uh, assessments and they were very happy about that. So some wished him well and some wished him to just leave because they are suffering. So this is another interesting aspect of um, uh, what we have investigated and uh, it could be also a paper later on. Mm. Mm. Yes, that's true. And uh, he, he the, the, actually the creator of the page characterizes the coronavirus because at some point when we had different uh, mutations of the virus, he acted with the Omicron, for example, as the little uh, kid he got. So he was actually taking the image of the father for the Omicron. So the coronavirus is celebrating the new baby. So he's being dealt with as a Facebook user, although we don't have, we only have an image of the virus on different characters but he's dealing with himself, the author is dealing as, as treating himself as a person, as a character.
And in many cases, it was bonding with the Egyptians, like when there was a football match and uh, we won, for example, uh, it would write a status that today is free. So you can celebrate uh, and have fun and it's not going to be infecting anyone today because it is celebrating with us as well. So it's, it's, it's a kind of creating a bond with the people who are supposed to be uh, hating the virus because yeah, it's a virus and yeah, we're, we're living in a nightmare because of it. Thank you. So, um, Very interesting. Yeah, thanks, um, Jason. And, and also just to add to that, um, just before you, um, so is that a problem? Is it a problem that there's this kind of um, characterization of a, a very terrifying and horrible disease as something that people start bonding with? And I mean, it becomes, it's a bit like those um, uh, cartoons where children go up and pet lions and that kind of thing. And you've got this kind of, um, skewed kind of uh, understanding of what this thing is through a kind of um, process of making it familiar and domestic and sweet um, when it's in fact blooming more horrible. I'm not sure if that's a, um, a, a problem. <laughs> is that something humor does? I don't think it's a problem. To me, it was a stress reliever. Yani, now we can talk to someone like the coronavirus and we're bonding. We're actually laughing at what's happening because that was a bit a traumatic event. We all stayed at home at once. We were scared of the virus. And here this page that makes fun of what we're living. So to me personally, that was a stress reliever. And actually, as you saw in the last meme, it's all forgotten about. Nobody now talks about the corona except few people who are still believing that they could be uh, at risk or something. So it's, uh, it's, it's totally forgotten about. People went back to their normal lifestyles and um, maybe few people just still remember uh, with the vaccine and the talk about the vaccines and uh, the medication and so on. Again, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, having had a close encounter with this virus, I never, never, never want to be that sick again for that long sure. ever in my life. So I feel like this is a, a, a kind of a, a, not something I would personally want to be laughing along with, but perhaps Omicron. Um, so Jason, did you want to say anything further before I um, go uh, on? Just just one thing, which was, and I think this ties into what we've been saying, um, is that what it made me think of was Paul Taylor, the, um, uh, the African-American uh, aesthetics uh, specialist, who um, I once, he, he gave this brilliant talk about what are the values of aesthetics uh, to people in conditions of oppression. And one that's always stuck with me is he said, let's, let's not forget, forget the technical stuff. Uh, he said, existential nourishment. Uh, when people are facing great stresses, something that just provides a resource for getting through is itself valuable. Um, and I think something that comes from this is this idea that the description that I was getting from what you were giving was that the page was a way of reminding people in a way that provided a kind of um, a pressure release mechanism. Exactly maintaining this reminder of the shared stress so it was a solidarity building thing and i'm interested that you said precisely that it wasn't necessarily a, a communication of protest it was that solidarity building in a in a way that kind of reduced stress i thought that was that that was very familiar to me and that that came to mind but that was that's that's it sorry thank you Thank you. No, thank you. I, I love that term, existential nourishment. I yes. think that that's something that would be definitely, if you if you do another paper, um, um, that's potentially a term for your title. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting it out there. Um, can I move on now to Jenna? She wants to ask one more question. Yes, sorry, guys, I only thought about this now. I just wanted to ask if the coronavirus Facebook page dealt with the vaccine. I don't recall. Uh, mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I, I don't think that I have encountered any comics or memes on the page related to the vaccine. Okay, but I, I, I really have to check it, Jenna, because I think at some point he shared, the page shared 
uh, the campaign that encourages people to go get the vaccine. And yes, I have it wasn't against the vaccine. It wasn't against the vaccine, but it did not, um, um, it did not use the vaccine as a sort of um, um, fuel to generate memes. I don't think I've seen okay. something like this. Because that's what I was wondering. I'm wondering if, if he, he or she um, took a specific stance on the vaccine, because I would have found that interesting, whether he advertised or promoted for people to get the vaccine, yes. or if he focused on the side effects or the dangers of the vaccine. So I would have been interested um, had he or she, <clears throat> sorry, had he or she taken approach or, or there were any means around that. So I was just curious about that. Uh, um, um, there were there were incidents when the coronavirus persona uh, wrote status updates uh, that would really raise the awareness of people and advise them to stay at home and to take care because things are uh, serious. Uh, so uh, yes, there were incidents when it wasn't a meme actually. It would be a normal status update advising people to stay at home or to take care because it's not that funny as it seems uh, to be. So no, it wasn't encouraging people to ditch the vaccine or to be reckless or anything. It was just making fun of the situation in order to relieve the tension. Thank you. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm, I think that that's a, um, obviously one, <clears throat> one of the most important, one of the important functions of humor. So the, another question I would like to ask you is about dark humor. Um, and how that works to kind of relieve tension in a way that I think it was your um, your very first meme about um, don't um, think or dream about living in this very fancy gated community, but um, yeah, you know, looking at look for a graveyard. <laughs> um, okay, I'm laughing. Actually, <laughs> but, um, graveyards in Egypt are uh, pricey too. And in order to buy a graveyard, this is <laughs> this is an asset that people invest in. <laughs> so it's oh, wow. not that easy yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then, and, and that kind of dark humor, how does that work to, I mean, do you, does the tension feel relieved there or do you feel unbalanced or disconcerted? I, I mean, for me, dark humor like that makes me feel a bit strange rather than, whew, okay, it's a relief of tension. I think the, the main uh, purpose of, of this meme was not actually mocking the numbers, but rather mocking the Madinati ad itself, because it was rather in the middle of the lockdown and here this ad encouraging people to go and socialize and buy new uh, apartments or new villas at the time of the numbers increasing and everyone is telling people to stay at home. So he was rather, I think he was rather mocking the ad itself, uh, not the increasing number of cases. Mm. Mm. And then do you feel angry about that or a, a feeling of tension release or relief? It, that that would be my question. That meme was not was not that was dark humor. It was not funny to me. Mm. It was a, a very um, mm. I don't know. It was not, it was rather stressful to me. So are we dying now? Are we all dying? The world ending? So to me personally, that was not relieving at all. And actually, a lot of people reacted sad to this meme. Many people didn't find that didn't find that very humorous or um, uh, humorous in a funny way or an amusing way. It was, as you said, kind of dark humor, yes, because yeah. it, it came in a time of uncertainty. People were not sure about what's coming next. The number of cases, the reported cases were not that big in comparison to the number of people living in Egypt. However, people were not sure about what's coming next and how things are going to uh, be in the future. So yes, it's dark humor, I agree. Mm -hmm. It kind of speaks again to that difference between humor and um, uh, a kind of um, good humor. <laughs> yes. a good, good humor is something that, that does relieve tension, but, but humor is bigger than that. And this dark humor leaves you uh, unsettled or um, displaced or unhappy in a way. Not, you, know, you don't feel like, um, you know, certainly don't feel like laughing although exactly. you do laugh sometimes mm -hmm. which is quite interesting um i feel like i'm dominating the conversation a little bit um no it's okay no problem. <laughs> um are there uh, i think we have a couple more minutes for um for discussion um so i'm not seeing uh 
sort of um, questions on chat. Um, if there's somebody who would like to um, sort of um, weigh in, um, perhaps either put your hand up or, or put your camera on and, um, you know, jump in. Otherwise, I think I'm going to <laughs> sort of carry on dominating you two, if that's possible. Because I mean, certainly then the the, the idea of, of dark humor, um, it does seem to me to just it, potentially create this kind of uh, a feeling of, of, of being upset or um, um, disrupted in a way. And then is the, the response to dark humor, um, is that a bonding response or is it a kind of um, a defensive, do you get a defensive kind of social division from dark humor? Um, so the question I'm really kind of trying to work out for myself is to what extent humor is a force for social cohesion and for peace building? Um, and to what extent humor is also kind of divisive and can cause um, uh, resistance? Um, I think so, this is looking at the reactions to the memes, uh, how many react like or sad or anger and what type of comments are there on each of these memes. And this requires a study in itself. It's very difficult to decide right now um, the role of humor depending on the type of meme. It requires looking at the comments and reactions to the meme on the page. Yes, yes. That would be Good. So, yeah. Maybe I'll and start working on it with Dr. May. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> um, I mean, that's part, I think, of the, of the, 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 the interest of, of these, these seminars is that they do seem to open up all sorts of possible lines for future research. And, and that, to me, would be fascinating is to, um, yeah, um, see what kind of response to the memes and analyze all of that. Um, um, particularly in view of this kind of um, idea that we're kind of trying to float here that um, uh, humor is a force in peace building, but it's not always. So it's very interesting to figure out what actually works and, and what doesn't um, in relation to that. Uh, Jenna, I'm not sure if you'd like to, to weigh in on that. Um, yes, Andrea, I just want to say with regard to um, humane peace building or humor being divisive, I think the main thing is who is performing the humor. I think um, for me, that's the main thing. For example, is it minorities um, performing the humor or, or the comedy, or is it someone in, in a powerful position? To me, that, that makes a difference to me, whether, it, whether it's um, creating solidarity and, and um, social cohesion or whether it's dividing people. I'm not sure if Nohair and May agree with me. Yes, yes, Jenna, I do agree with you, but the idea with uh, humor or comedians on social media, they are usually, uh, they're not kind of official uh, mm. or renowned uh, uh, comedians. They are independent comedians, so they, they in most cases, they express their personal opinions. Uh, so I, I suppose, I think they take the side of the people, not the government, unless they have a certain um, kind of announced uh, position uh, that, they, that they adopt on their pages. Uh, otherwise, I think uh, they are, I wouldn't call them a minority. We are the people after all, but uh, they do have their independent kind of views uh, that reflect in, in humor, in the humor they produce. I agree, I totally agree. And I think also that the humor when it comes from the powerful part or the powerful side, it's not humorous anymore. It's like, I don't know. I feel like when it comes from the minority, as you say, or the weaker uh, side, it is humorous, it is funny. Because as we said in the beginning, it's a way to relieve tension and to vent out. And sometimes nothing changes, but actually people have laughed it off. But when it comes from the powerful side, um, it's a fact, it's not humor anymore. They're, it's stating a fact, not uh, maybe a wish or uh, something that they would like to change. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks. you very much. 
Yeah, um, I'm, I'm with you there too, because I think that if we go back to the, um, our previous um, seminar on soft power, the, the, I think one of the questions that came up there, which I think is quite important, is that can you actually use humor or make use of humor for soft power if you are the state? Um, or you know, just by appropriating humor from the position of, of, of um, on high, do you actually then um, destroy its, its um, value and its power? Um, I think that kind of your, your answer to that kind of speaks to that a bit, that there's, there's something difficult about using humor from a position of power. You do kind of, in a way, maybe always, I don't know if you always need to be the underdog, but, um, you know, <laughs> or the people. No. Um, well, I mm, yes, yeah. Sorry, just an interesting, uh, another example of this that springs to mind is that uh, in South Africa, we have a recent history of um, uh, recurring power cuts, uh, which are euphemized as load shedding, um, which have been going on and on for well a number of decades, uh, a number of years now um, into this new decade. But what's interesting is quite often, because again, this is something which is communicated in the form of formal government announcements, there are warnings, um, and because that's the main mode of address, it can be parodied. And there's this tendency for humor about load shedding to also parody the form of official announcements and sometimes it's the state or the state energy provider which gets embodied. Um, and this isn't coming from a specific joke account as such, but I've noticed it now that you've drawn my attention to it as a kind of mode of joke, that there's a tendency for people to make jokes in social media contexts, uh, because similar to what you're describing, it's a shared, in principle, solidarity building experience of hardship and communications tend to take the form of official announcements. Uh, and what that seems to invite is either parodying the official announcement voice or um, taking the form of snide comments about official announcements. And it interests me, it hadn't occurred to me until you have all been pointing out these parallels or the, these mechanisms, that what's going on there is there's a, a shared hardship which has to be endured and there's a certain form of engagement that becomes common. And this particular form of humor that we all point to the shared experience uh, in this instance shared, as opposed to uh, where power differentials aren't present, it becomes a form of common ground and a form of common joke forms the common ground. And I, I thought it was worth noting that that strikes me as interesting that it's a parallel circumstance uh, and I think it was for humor in South Africa as well, um, but with, without the clear example of an account that you've given. So it, it might be that there's that solidarity building as a function um, of, of these kinds of shared experiences. Uh, but thanks for helping me realize that. Thank you. Um, uh, so a quick, quick comment to that would be, could the... Um, uh, our service provider for power um, use humor um, in their announcements. Could they humorously tell us that we are going to have yet another power cut? Um, that, <laughs> um, that would be something, uh, would it work? <laughs> or they would leave that to us. <laughs> I think it's worth noting that um, the, the, the official announcement mechanism has devolved to a set of apps which themselves parody it, right? Because the, the actual announcement of which areas are going to be affected was sufficiently complicated that it required scheduling. So the main way that I find out these things is through push notifications from an app called ESCOM Push, which is actually a rude joke. The app is named in a way that is an insult to the power provider. So it's interesting that that space seems already to be, to have been preempted, but mm. much like what you're saying, it, the, the, the push notifications come from an app, which gives the very serious vital information about when a power cut is coming and what its duration will be depending on where you are. 
but they also build humor into what they're doing. Like it's very frustrating to face these moments of great difficulty that stagger the economy and halt what you're doing. But they come with smiley little things like, well, sorry guys, the news is bad. Good news, it's only going to be this bad from now on. So in answer to what Andrea is saying, possibly for the best in that instance, what's really, really interesting is that a humorous alternative has been appropriated already. Uh, there's already a service which uses humor to disperse this information and the state possibly for the best does not have access to that because the space has already been taken, which is itself, I think, quite an interesting uh, way to speak to that larger conversation about how these things get used. Yes. Okay. So lots of material for <laughs> your, next, um, <laughs> your next paper, your book. I'm afraid we have run out of time. Um, so I would just like to thank both of you for an absolutely fascinating um, presentation. And I'm very, very much looking forward to reading your article, but also your, your new stuff. <laughs> There's a lot for you to do. Thank yeah. you so much for the opportunity. Um, I really enjoy it and appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm afraid I also have to rush off to a meeting now, so I'm going to say an abrupt goodbye, um, and we will hopefully see you all next week. Um,